Hi, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me. First things first, I would like to thank everybody that donated to the International Rescue Committee in honor of my birthday. It meant so much to me. My uncle Carl Lemley during World War II saved more than 300 Jewish families by signing affidavits for them to bring them to the United States and then setting them up with homes and jobs once they were here. And at the same time, his contemporary Albert Einstein helped create the International Rescue Committee, which provided emergency aid and long-term assistance to individuals who were displaced by war, by persecution, and by natural disaster. Overall, we raised more than $540, which blew me away. I would just like to give a special, special thank you to Natalie Canuni, Kirsten Benson, Brittany Chait, Devin Stambler, Julia Arikio, Kimberly Rice, Becca Derigish, Ali Zamani, Juan Rodriguez, Elizabeth Chait, Asabi Lee, Gerald Paulson, Daniel Prababa, Elisa Westman, Stephen Potter, Wild Wild West, and my mom Rosemary for all donating to the cause. Thank you, thank you, times a million. Thanks so much. Today's video gets into something that I've touched upon a lot before, but I think it's time that we really dive into it. When you think of movies, you usually think of Hollywood and Beverly Hills, of glitz and glamour and movie stars, but the start of the film industry was actually quite different. Before Hollywood, there was Fort Lee, New Jersey. This is where the first movie studios were and where people like Charlie Chaplin, D.W. Griffith, Mary Pickford, and the Barrymores all spent their early film days. Though the start of the film industry was an exciting time, it wasn't always smooth sailing. Within a few years, the film industry would move west and Fort Lee would be all but forgotten. And my uncle Carl was actually a big part of that. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the fight between Carl Lemley and Thomas Edison and how movies came to Hollywood. The start of the film industry can be attributed in great part to Thomas Edison, like the same Thomas Edison that invented the light bulb. In 1897, after creating a motion picture camera called the Kinetograph, Edison filed patents to protect his work. But he didn't file patents for another invention of his called the peephole machine. And this allowed the Lumiere brothers to come in and create a similar but more portable version called the Cinematograph, which was inspired by Edison's work, but better because it included a projecting device. Edison continued his work though and acquired the rights to an American projector so he could start making and exhibiting motion pictures himself. And then, because he had so many patents, he was able to charge other filmmakers looking to make their own projects. Ultimately, in his lifetime, Edison acquired more than 2,000 patents. As a leader in the film industry, Edison was able to use his clout to create a group of companies called The Trust. <laughs> The trust was made up of the film companies Vitagraph, American Pathé, SNA, Selig Polyscope, Calum Company, Star Film, Paris, Lubin Manufacturing, and the world's largest raw film distributor, Eastman Kodak. Any filmmakers not in this group had to pay exorbitant fees to produce their own projects, plus they had to use Edison's own equipment. Then they had to pay to rent his patented projectors to screen their work. And Edison had fixed the theater admission prices, so they were reluctant to spend the money to make quality films. Essentially, they were just churning out uninspired piece after piece. And anyone who tried to make a film outside of the trust would face dire consequences. Not only would Edison bog them down in lawsuits in order to drain their time and their resources, but he would actually send his lackeys out to harass and intimidate the filmmakers. Just like out of an old mob movie, they would smash cameras and destroy film and batter projectors and burn a theater to the ground to get their message across. It was obviously a time of high control, high stress, high cost, and it was keeping the industry down. Enter Carl Lemley. He was a German immigrant chasing the American dream. He worked all sorts of jobs from New York to Wisconsin. He worked on a farm and in a drugstore, and he managed a clothing store in Oshkosh for a few years where he married and he had two kids. In some ways, his life might have seemed very settled, but he still had that entrepreneurial spirit and the dream of opportunity alive within him. After leaving his job at the clothing store, Carl took the train back to Chicago to figure out what was next for him. It was then that he saw his first Nickelodeon, where you would pay a nickel to see a movie. And he saw the crowd waiting, and he did the math, and he realized that film was gonna be his next big venture. So he immediately took his life savings and invested it in a theater in Chicago. And it did so well that he made his foray into distribution and then production itself, which is what led to his ultimate run-in with Thomas Edison. 
Edison's monopoly endured in New Jersey, and he continued to rule the film industry with an iron fist. Carl Lemley was looking to expand his business and decided to go independent anyway, despite the threats from Edison and his men. He created his own production company, which he facetiously named the Independent Moving Picture Company, which shortened to Imp. This was a play on Carl himself because he was only 5'2", but also the mischief that he was causing Edison. He acquired all of his film equipment from abroad, and he even sent some of his productions to shoot in Cuba. Thomas Edison, meanwhile, filed 289 lawsuits against Carl Lemley, intending to bog him down in paperwork and attorney's fees. It cost about a third of a million dollars to fight, and Carl wasn't just gonna sit in New Jersey and wait while it all happened. He had joined with a couple other local independent studios in what would later become known as Universal Pictures. He had a studio in Fort Lee, but he was in constant danger as he kept producing independent films, circumventing Edison's trust. Carl realized that the best way to avoid Edison and his lackeys was just to get as far away as possible. This was before the internet or commercial airlines. It just wasn't possible for Edison to enforce his patents from all the way across the country. So Carl talked to a couple of his colleagues and they picked up and moved west. Along for the ride were Adolf Zucker of Paramount, William Fox of the Fox Film Corporation, and a couple other contemporaries. They came to LA, set up their studios around town, and a movie-making city was born. Carl Lemley opened up Universal Studios in California on March 15, 1915. A master of publicity, he created an entire Universal City around the studio and promoted the strangest city in the world in every newspaper and magazine he could. Finally, he hopped on a train back east and rode the train all the way back to Universal City, picking up excited patrons along the way. This helped to establish Hollywood as the new place to make a movie. In the meantime, Carl Lemley's case was being heard in the courts. On January 12th and January 15th of 1917, the courts heard Motion Picture Patents Company v. Universal Film Company. And on April 9th of 1917, the court ruled in Carl Lemley's favor. Thomas Edison, they said, was abusing his patent rights and exhibiting control far beyond his legal ability. This case was actually really important and extended beyond the film world. It set the precedent for patent misuse disputes that's still used today. With their Supreme Court victory, you might think the filmmakers would have been eager to get back to Fort Lee, but in the years since their move, Hollywood had become a booming city and everyone was settling in quite nicely. They loved the great weather year round and they loved the access to many types of land. Within just a few miles, you could get to the beach, to snow, to the desert or the forest. Plus, the city of Los Angeles offered some great tax incentives, which kept filmmakers working and happy. The world had a new film capital, and it was Hollywood, California. Today, almost every major studio has roots in Hollywood. There are the originals like Universal, Fox, and Paramount, but also Disney and Warner Brothers and tons of smaller companies. Thomas Edison ceased production in 1918 due to financial hardship after the disbanding of the trust and filmmaking continued in New Jersey for only a short time after. When Thomas Edison went after Carl Lemley, Carl could have just fallen in line or left the industry altogether. But because he was willing to fight and see it through to the end, the film industry was able to explode, and it's now Hollywood that defines the film industry, while Fort Lee is just a distant memory. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you again to everybody who donated to the International Rescue Committee for my birthday. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta and support my work on Patreon. Thanks again. Bye.